most of the guys that created the Bloods and Crips were teenagers. Tookie and them was teenagers. They was Tookie and them was teenagers. It wasn't until people was going to prison, meeting a lot of these like these Muslim guys, these black uh, these Black Panthers, these these uh, black gorilla families, when they start coming home and start realizing the politicized the blood and cripping, but it was probably almost too late around the time that they are. It wasn't enough for them when they was coming out to their, coming back to their neighborhoods to try to uh, uh, revolutionize the mentality of the Bloods and Crips. It was, it got too late, especially around uh, the early eighties when crack cocaine was introduced into our communities. That's when it really, that's when it really got out of hand because when crack cocaine came to our community, it wasn't about building us as a strong nation anymore. It was it was about everybody out for their own. Everybody trying to everybody trying to get rich off the crack cocaine. Are you either smoking it or are you dealing it? So um when I wrote this book, it was just to basically get an understanding of who I was. I had no idea who, who actually I was, and I never wanted to write the book. It was just um one day I sat in uh, solitary confinement for about three or four years. And I'm like, damn, if I was to die, nobody wouldn't really know nothing about me. And so I had wrote my first book. And then when I let a couple of dudes that was in solitary confinement read it, and they was like, man, this sound like some Monster Cody shit. Those who don't know Monster Cody made rest in peace. He was a guy from A-Trey Gangster. He wrote a book of autobiography, but a lot of his homeboys was very upset what he wrote. Um, it talked about the Crips, especially particularly the A-Trey gangsters and uh, their beasts with the rolling 60s and every other stuff that he was saying. A lot of people got in trouble that who names he put in that book. But so I went and tore that whole script up. So what I did, I went out and I started reading a whole bunch of biographies from all type of different people. I said, I want to see what what could I go with my life story? Because at the end of the day, I have to better myself so I can show where I came from to where I am now. So I went and started writing my book. I wrote it over and I wanted to tell you about the cause and effects of becoming. And when you get into this lifestyle, there are causes and there are effects. Hopefully somewhere within that cause and effects in between, you could change the game. But I'm going to show you everything that I went through. I'm not going to glorify it, but I'm going to show you the things that I went through. So you won't have to experience a lot of the shit that I'd have been through. Salute to the bro that just came up. Who's that, Mac B? Yeah, what's up with it, man? Love to the fam, man. Salute, salute, salute homie. Do y'all, oh, y'all know each other? Yeah, my boy Spliff added me on here, man. That's my bro. Oh, oh, my oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, my, my, my bad, Jay. This is uh, for the troll that said, why Spliff ain't trying to bring BDs and GDs together? This is a big GD. Yeah, big man. GD. Hey, 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 hold up, hold up. Hey, 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 hold up. Uh, uh, for you cats don't know, he runs with some major GDs, nigga. Yep. Major. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Four. yeah. <laughs> Full you know, all the guys, man, they, you know, we function together, man. BDs and GDs, bro. It's all love for a fact. Yeah, yeah. Hey, young blue, let, I'm, I'm going to let the homie finish speaking and just just, just uh, mute it, and then we're going we gonna to get to you, homie. All right, right on. All right. My apologies. I, I, just, I, I thought I was talking to you, Mac B. My, my, I can't the mic, <laughs> baby. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> hey, hey, is my it's comrade Joseph you. P. Lane and, and, and Bella B here? Is they in the audience? Cause nah, I, I, you know, I want to. They're not back. They're not, I'm gonna drop in, in case they're in the audience, though. Yeah, uh, Bella B, Joseph P. Lane. If y'all here, y'all uh, tune in. I got to get y'all uh, a few seconds, and maybe y'all can answer, uh, ask me some questions that a lot of people may want to know. Um, Spiff, is there, is there anything? Go ahead. Sorry about that. I say I got a question for you. Uh, this is me asking from just a civilian standpoint. You know, I ain't part of no yeah. politics. No political shit, none of that. I'm a civilian, right. so um, you said you locked up for a murder you ain't commit. Uh, is it basically you locked up because you're not willing to speak out against it, or 
Or what exactly do you mean? That's what's what's keeping you locked up from that murder you didn't commit, basically. All right. Uh, there's there's you know um, there's a sister and uh, she's real close to me. Her her name is Melina Abdullah, Doctor Melina Abdullah. She runs the Black Lives Matter in L.A. She's one of the co-founders and um, she goes on a radio show a lot. And then one day, she was on a radio station. She said. Jay Burton is a contemporary political prisoner. Now, there's a difference between a political prisoner and a contemporary political prisoner. I had to go, I called her, I'm like, what do you mean I'm a, co a contemporary political prisoner? And she broke it down. I said, damn, that makes a lot of sense. Um, the Los Angeles sheriffs, they got a, a, a police gang called the uh, Linwood Viking sheriffs. Um, the federal judges called them a white neo-Nazi uh, uh, police gang. I got caught up in some of their, some of their, some of their, some of their politics, so to speak, right? Um, for 34 years, they said first they said my fingerprint was on a murder weapon. Back in night, uh, back in nine, 1990 when I went to trial, I've been trying for 30, about 30, I've been down, almost 30, about 33 years. I've been trying to get that fingerprint. They will not give me that fingerprint. 33 years thousands of dollars i done spent getting lawyers trying to get this fingerprint why they won't give me this one single fingerprint because the fingerprint don't belong to me it will exonerate it will exonerate me from the uh, conviction um she called me a contemporary political prisoner since i've been incarcerated i've been in, in solitary confinement for about maybe about 15 years i just did nine years in solitary confinement not for me putting in work but because of the mind that i got now how I go, how back in 2006, I got out the shoe, uh, the shoe is solitary confinement. It's, it's, it's an acronym for a security housing unit. How I got out and I saw how these bloods and crips was walking on the main lines and like, like chickens with their heads cut off. Um, I went up to the, 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 those who ran the yards and I let them know, look, man, we can't be letting the youngsters run around here. Nobody want to get them. I got them. I got all of the other young bloods and crips together, all the ones that want to participate, and I start educating them. There's about 15 goon squads came, snatched me up, put my ass in solitary confinement for nine years. Not for nothing I did, but they put me in solitary confinement for nine years. They there was over 30,000 prisoners in 2012 or 13 that hunger strike with us. And it took hunger strikes, took two people to die in a hunger strike for us to get out of them solitary confinement units. Um, I went to a, a, a juvenile uh, parole hearing in 2017. I was on my 27th year. I told, a, I told a, 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 the, the, the prison board, I said, look, I have the victim's names here and I'm gonna do a, 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 a um, apology statement to them, but I also need them to know that I'm in here for somebody else's crime. With that being said, I also said that my mother is also a victim because my mother lost her child at 16 years old and I'm still in here. It's 27 years later. They told my ass, look, um, at the end, they said, you lucky we won't deny you parole for 15 years. So we're just going to deny you half that for seven years. So they denied me a whole nother parole hearing for another seven years. I mean, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, for seven more years back in 2017. Just because I refused to say that I'm the gun, man. Look, I didn't shoot nobody. I didn't kill nobody. But back to you, there's somebody in our hood that did that. And I'm but had that person been in prison, I I you know, I don't know. I don't I don't keep I, I have no no connection with that person that did this. But you know, street code dictates otherwise. I am uh, I'm serving time on somebody else's uh, murder, and they know that. They know that. The uh, Los Angeles sheriffs, they know this. Uh, the Los Angeles sheriffs been hiding evidence that can actually exonerate me from this conviction. Actually, they've been hiding the evidence over 30, damn near 35 years. They will not give me the single fingerprint. They had an informant. The informant was like, uh, well, uh, when he came to trial, I got the trial transcript. He said, look, man, I was on dope and I was trying to get out of prison. And when uh, when uh, police showed me pictures of Jay, I told him, yeah, I know him. 
And they said, well, did you tell them what you, he said, man, I told them whatever they wanted to hear to try to work me a deal to get out. He said all this shit on the stand. Damn. But then they was like, oh, well, you know what? We got Jay number. We got Jay on um, fingerprint on the gun. The fucked up part about that is that my attorney didn't even challenge that fingerprint on the gun. My attorney never once asked for a copy of that fingerprint during trial. Imagine if the attorney would have asked for a copy of that fingerprint. I wouldn't be here. I'd probably be talking to y'all, but not probably in this in, in this sense. Wait, we can't hear you, Jay. The sound went. The sound went away. Oh, he got to take himself off mute. Hey, t- take yourself off oh. mute. No, the uh, the the uh thing keep putting me on mute by itself. I just start realizing that. Okay. It keep putting it keep putting me on mute. So yeah, so that's basically the gist of the story when it comes to, in that perspective. Um, actually, I just got a letter from a lawyer out of Beverly Hills. Um, I can't. The letter basically saying, next time I come up here, I basically let you see the letter. Le- letter basically saying is that being that you were a juvenile, I was 16 in 89, there has been laws, new laws that has come into effect, and I qualify for resentencing right now. The lawyer that they, they appointed to me, he's uh, he's out of, uh, 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 he's waiting, actually he's out of Beverly, I think I said that, he's waiting for them to send my prison file to him so he can file what they call as a resentencing so they can basically get me out of prison. These people don't want to accept accountability that they got the wrong person. The Los Angeles sheriffs, the, 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 the police gang, the Viking sheriffs, one person so far has got out. His name is Frankie Carrillo. He, he did about 20 years. Cold thing, me and him had the same attorneys. I, he was 16, just like me. I was in 89, he was in 91. Um, he did over 20 years. They just awarded him $10 million. Um, everything that was going on with his case went on with my case. And right now he's running for California California Senate. He's, he's a close friend of mine and he's also trying to help me uh, get exposure on what's going on as well, right? Yeah. So like I said, I got a lot of things going on, bro. And uh, you know, uh, I, I tell people don't feel sorry for me because I, you know, God got a way of making things happen, and it is it, it set in motion for s- certain reasons. Whatever the reason was, I found my calling since I've been in here, and I'm not one of the ones that's going to tell you that prison saved me. Prison didn't save me from shit, because I could never tell you that prison saved me. A lot of people come and say, "Well, well, because I came to prison and saved me." No, prison ain't saved me. I just came to prison and it, 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 I was came to prison and a journey that I was set up when I was on the street was probably going in this way, in this direction. But when I came to prison, it took me in a whole different direction and it opened my eyes up to realize that, you know what, now that you're in this situation, you're in the dark, it's a, it, it, you got to find a light. Once you find that light, that light is always hope. No matter where you are, whether you're in these physical prisons or if you're on the street in your own mental prison, always find look for that light because you follow that light that light is hope and that light would it will show you where you can go in life because many of us are in prison no matter where you at whether you're on the streets or you in here you are in prison i'm gonna let your audience see what it look like it let me see if i can get a visual of what i've been subjected to for damn near 35 years let me see let me know if y'all can see can y'all see this Y'all can see? Yeah. These are some of the brothers that's out here doing whatever the hell it is. They Damn, do. that shit crazy. We on lockdown right now. Uh, not lockdown, no. We ain't on lockdown. Most people probably on the yard right now. So you got some of the brothers right there that look like they playing dominoes. Them are all crips right there. You got some bloods that's walking over there. Let me see. The Mexicans and whites, they they go they they go to that side, so you know it's like a uh, 
it's more of a, a racial division in these California prisons. So being in there, how many uh, racial encounters or wars do you feel like you'd have been a uh, part of a witness being in there? Well, shit. If if you see my prison file, you'd be like, damn, this dude is crazy. Um, I'd have been involved in several uh, um, black Mexican wars. Um, not really black white wars. Actually, now when I think about, it, I ain't. I have since I've been there, I haven't even been in no black white wars because it really is. Be honest, with you, it really isn't that many whites in here. In this building, it's maybe one, two. One, two, three, four. It's five whites in this building, so we don't even really have it because there ain't really no whites on the prison yards. Uh, we have racial wars. I've been in maybe about three or four of them. I'd have been in, involved in, in Blood and Crip. Uh, I've been maybe in about three Blood and Crip wars, but the thing is with the Bloods and Crip, it was just something that because Bloods and Crips really don't beef with each other in here. But the thing is, it may have just popped off because of it just may have popped off. Usually the wars I've been in with the Bloods and Crips, it wasn't nothing that was planned. It just popped off because of maybe uh, one of the homies is in a dice game and, and, and they just mad they lost and just it just went up. So it, it like you now it, it see with the Bloods and Crips, it's crazy how organized Bloods and Crips are in prison as opposed to when they on the street. 